welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about packages in the Go programming language. As usual, we're going to start off by trying to understand what packages are and see how we use them and of course define our own packages. It wouldn't be a complete conversation if we didn't go through at least those three things. So let's get started. A good place to start is by looking at Go's own defi definition of a package from the language specification. And this is what it says. Go programs are constructed by linking together packages. A package in turn is constructed from one or more source files that are declared, that together declare constant types, variables, and function belonging to the package, and which are accessible in all files of the same package. Those elements may be exposed and used in another package. Now, a lot of words there, but the thing to understand is a package is just a way to group a number of source files, and in each source file, you're going to be able to define constant types, variables, and functions. Of those four, three of them you already know. We've covered constants before, we've covered variables, and the previous video was on functions. The last one, point types, we haven't covered yet. But we'll get to that, not in this video, but in the next video. And the other thing it said there is that packages not only allow you to um, put packages together to build your link packages together to build your program, your application, but also that packages can expose or export um, these things, the constants, the variables, the functions, and the types, so that other packages can be used them. And we're going to see that soon. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, so let's look at a picture here, terrain, if you will, illustration. So if we try to visualize a package, what we're going to see is that big blue thing represents our package. And let's call this package foo. Our package foo is going to be made up of several files. And each file will then define, um, you know, constant variables, function, and types. So each file gets to define whatever it wants in terms of constant variables, function, and type. And when you put them together in the same package, now all those things belong to the same package because those files that define them belong to that package. It does not mean that every file in the package must define those four things. It only means that each file can define those four things. So some files might define a constant, some files might you know, contribute some uh, variable or uh, functions or type, but you get the idea. So one of the other, some of the other things you get from using packages that, weren't, that wasn't quite defined in the statement we read from the Google specification was the ability to be able to reuse packages. And we know this is the case because we've been using packages in our application, the FMT package, for example, and we've been reusing that over and over in every application we've written so far. So certainly, package gives you the ability to reuse code easily. The other one is organization. Um, when you have a big application, it just makes sense to be able to say that oh, these set of things go together and those set of things go together. And um, being able to organize your larger application makes it easier to reason about and explain it to someone else. We've mentioned this idea with functions. Functions allow you to have reuse also of small pieces of code. Now packages take it to sort of another level. Abstraction, you may not even think a bit about it. But abstraction is also another benefit that you get from packages. Before I um, talk about abstraction, let me meant, let's sort of understand something else that was mentioned in that description about packages, and is that things can be exported from um, a package. And we, I'm going to refer to that as the visibility of you know, members. So when you define, when you create your package, as we know, this, you can have one or more files, and each file contributes or define you know, those four things, constants, variables, functions, or types. We're going to call those things members of the package, okay? And some of them we might choose to keep private, and some we might make public to, so that others who import our package can use them. So in this example, for, uh, when we look at the Mac package, for example, we can see that sign is being exported from that package because when we import it, we have access to that sign function. And so this also shows you how abstraction comes in here because you don't have to think about the detail 
of all the math function like sine, cosine, arctan, and so on, you can just say, I'm going to abstract that detail into a package or someone else has abstracted and implemented for me, and now I can just import it and use it. And we see three of the ways there that you can use a package or the things that are exported from a package is you can just simply say import slash lib slash package and the last name there in this case math in the first example is what you use as the top level name for the things that are being exported exposed by that um, exported by that package so you can say math that sign for example to call the sign function the second example is you use an alias and so this comes in Andy if you want to introduce a shorter name or maybe you have multiple pack packages um, providing the same function and maybe um, you might have another math package provided by your company for example and you just don't want to include if you imported company forward slash math it would want to give it the same name of course you know Go is going to warn you about this but now you can say you know lib math is going to be called M and my company math is going to be called C math or something and you have a different name you can use it um, the final one is um, I don't recommend using this way this is where you import and make everything that is exposed in that package visible to your application or within the package you import it into and you don't have to prefix with a name I don't think it's a good idea it can lead to collision and yes even though you're going to be warned about it I don't think it's worth the effort to go back and have to fix when you have collision why not just use a simple name okay so I don't suggest using import with the dots just so you don't have to type a sort of an alias before it quickly revisit this idea of private and public or exported such unexported members of a package so one way again to visualize this is to say I have a package full and of course there are a number of files in one or more files but in this case I show three files in my package foo and one file the first one there on the left contributes or define a constant and a variable and it makes that available or export export it so that anybody who import this package foo would be able to use that constant and that variable uh, the second file the middle one just exports a function and the last file exports a variable and a type now together those three files when they are compiled into my package I can say expose a constant a two variables a function and a type now we haven't yet said exactly how you say that something is private or something is exported I've specifically left that off the table but we'll see that when we look at the code it's just trying to get you to understand the concept and so far big concepts are your application is built up with packages and packages have one or more files source files and each source file can define constant variables function or types and some of those members can be private or exported if we look at this next illustration here you can see I have this application called recipe manager and it's you know built up with packages again some of the packages the ones on the right the four packages I import that are provided in um, by uh, Go language and then of course I write my own package main and then I also have another package called recipe which I write and is specifically for this particular application enough talk let's look at some code and so we're going to do of course a nice contrive application or set of applications and here I want to demonstrate a number of things one I want to show just a simple application that uses import packages from this um, Go language library and we've seen those before but it's good to see it again doesn't hurt and then I'm going to write a package I'm going to call a security package keep in mind that this is very simple it's just for illustration only and it doesn't actually do anything and then I'm going to demonstrate that I'm going to be able to expose um, or export um, three methods and I'll have a private um, member a variable that's not exported and of course um, we can also write our recipe manager again I'm going to speed up the video so um, it doesn't take too long but you can slow it down um, in YouTube um, just pause it stop it but basically what I'm going to do first thing I'm going to do is create a an application called awesome it doesn't it's not going to do anything very simple application but I'm going to create a directory for it 
right my main that go file in this package the main package and then I'm going to install it using the go install command from the directory of this application and then I'll be able to run it and you're going to see it's going to install it in the go path bin directory so now that I have that going now let me create my security package so again I'm going to create a directory for that and I'm going to create three files I'll create a login that go file a logout that go file and a common that go file the common file is where I'm going to put things that are shared between the two um, functions that I'm going to put each in login and logout and so that's going to be my current user for example um, I need to share that between login so the login function can set the current user and the logout function can remove the current user so again just contrive I really need to create a file for each function but again it just goes to show that you can do whatever you want the key thing here notice for my package um, and the files that I want to um, the members I want to expose which is this logout function login function the only thing for me to say that they're exported is to use a capital letter in the first name um, the, the first letter of the name the current user variable it's private in the package and so I use a lowercase that's the magic that's the key in go to say something is exported from a package you simply start it with a capital letter uppercase letter um, in to make it private lowercase letter that's it nothing else no fancy keyword or anything very very simple and as you can see when I go to my recipe manager and I want to use the security um, package you're going to see those two things only are going to be exposed to it but one of the things I want to do is in Install my security package so I can use it and I'm going to demonstrate that too by showing you here that I go to the directory I say go install it compiles it and it doesn't put it in the bin directory because it recognizes that though there's no main so it's not an application that can run remember every executable application needs a package main with a function main I say it doesn't have that so it compiles it and it puts it in the package directory and of course it used that whole nested thing so you can find it but we don't need to worry about the details of where to actually put it. I just wanted to show you that. Now that I have my security package installed, now I'm going to turn to my recipe manager application. I'm going to create a subdirectory to all my recipe package for this recipe manager. And I'll create a recipe that go file. And I'm going to expose or export two methods. Add a recipe and remove a recipe. And of course, again, using that uppercase um, letter for the name. And that's all I need. Another good practice is that anything that you export or expose from a package, you should always comment it so that the Go documentations tool can pick it up and give proper documentation to users of your package to say what you're exposing and what, the, what it does. And so this again is very simple. Now I'm going to turn to write in my main.go for the application itself. This is going to be for the recipe manager. And here I want to include some security in my recipe manager. So I reuse my security package that I defined before. And as you can see, there's a helpful description that go extracted from the comments that I put on that method. And um, you can see the only two things that show me that's exported are those two functions, not method, sorry. I use it method, but functions that I made use uppercase letter for. And notice that current user is not even shown because that is um, not being exported. Now I can go ahead and add some more methods to my package and for example I can check if um, a user is authenticated and be able to pass in the username who I want to check for and have this method return like true a boolean value true or false if that user is or isn't authenticated and notice how I can just go add this to any one of the functions in my package or add new functions and you're going to see I'm going to install this updated package and it's going to come with those up with the updated method. Again, pretty straightforward. I invite you to slow down the video. I invite you to look at the source code. It's on GitHub. You can either clone the code and look at it or just browse it online. Install the updated security package with the is authenticated method and then let's rebuild our application and just test it and we can see that we're going to check to see if the user is currently logged in. If they're not, we're going to log in, and then we're going to, of course, log out. So 
that seems to work. So our updated package is working. Since we write in a recipe manager, we have to be able to add and remove recipes. So let's do that in our main application. And so we're going to add like pizza and we're going to add cake and maybe um, try to remove sushi. And right now we're just going to, we're not going to see anything because our methods are empty, but we should really put some, something in those uh, methods so we can actually see them print out, uh, pre and print out something. The other thing is that since our recipe package is part of our recipe manager, or we are in that directory, when we say go install, go is smart enough to actually look and see that our application uses the recipe package, which is also a set of directory there, and install um, the recipe package if there are changes necessary. So you can see I didn't have to say install recipe package to get the updated recipe and then install my Go application. I just said go install in this directory and it took care of everything for me. All right, that's been pretty simple, but we're not actually storing our recipe anywhere. And of course we have no idea how many recipes we have in our database anyway. But assuming that we wanted to add a method to count how many recipes in our database, um, you know, this looks the same. Just come up to our recipe package and add a count method, for example. Count function, I, sorry, I keep saying method. A count function, count function, which we're going to expose, and now we could return the number of um, LM recipes in our database. And I'll show how to do that towards the end. It might not seem that way, but we've covered a lot in this video. And just to kind of show you, so let's say that Bluebox is our application where we imported um, recipe and security packages. And so we know those are going to come out of our package directory in our go path um, directory and where we have our go path pointing to and enter, of course, a source directory there uh, where we're writing all this code is also going to be in go path. And so we have a recipe manager directory, a subdirectory of that is our recipe package. We have our awesome app application directory. We have our security package in its own directory also. And of course, in the package directory, we have FMT and other packages. And of course, this recipe and security one once we have them installed. And then for the bin directory, well, that's where our awesome application is going to be. And also our recipe manager once that's compiled in the application. So it's just a lot going on. I don't want to draw too many lines, but I kind of want to recap some of the things we've shown earlier and discuss in this video. Now I'm going to show you how I enhanced the recipe package by adding a map to keep track of our recipe where we add them. And don't think this again as anything other than just an illustration. We didn't cover map as a type. And so it's just for, to complete the illustration um, of what we were doing. And Again, I thank you for joining me. I hope you learned something new. I hope you enjoyed the course. And of course, subscribe, invite others to subscribe, spread the word, give feedback. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.